Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Glad that you've chosen to be with us as we gather once again around Word and Sacrament, uh, the people of God here at St. Paul. Um, just a reminder that our second part of our annual meeting will be after um, worship. We will gather together here in the sanctuary to celebrate our ministry. Hopefully you picked up a, 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 a folder. We have those, I think those are from AAL actually, um, a whole box of those things. So hopefully you picked up, a, and within those then are a directory, a new directory, a, an annual report, and a scratch sheet. Uh, so um, we wanted to share, share the wealth with you, I guess. So, um, please, if you haven't picked one of those up, make sure you do as you leave, or uh, in particular, right before the meeting, we'll be kind of going through, um, going through those, uh, those reports and celebrating our ministry. Just a reminder that Lent is coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll begin our Lenten pilgrimage on Ash Wednesday, uh, the 22nd, and our midweek services will be then every um, every Wednesday then beginning in March um, with um, and it, the theme is created for community and they're based on uh, Mark's gospel uh, the gospel of Mark will be our primary text any other announcements <clears throat> we need to bring before the community as we as we gather okay seeing none then we prepare ourselves for worship as we um, as we light the candles and listen to the prayer.
be the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and the new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior.
God, the strength of all who hope in you. Because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do, and give us grace and power to do that. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
our Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that even everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for the whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of inchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it said that to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. I gather the Torah. Good morning. How's everybody? Talk to them a lot, and 
But one of the hardest things, I think, of being a Christian is to love my neighbor when he does something wrong, or at least in my eyes, does something wrong, okay? And it's really hard to, um, to talk to them sometimes when they do so much, maybe, things that we don't like, okay? But Jesus is there with you to help you continue to love them. Okay. Your mom and dad have told you um, things that, I mean, they discipline you, right? Yeah, okay. Um, what if, so they maybe like take things away? Are you mad at them? Yeah, probably, right? Yeah, but they still love you, okay? They want you to grow up um, and learn some things that are really, really important. And Jesus wants us to know that God loves us too. Even though we make bad choices, even though we don't love our neighbor sometimes like we should, um, God asks us to continue to try to do that with his help and with the parents who are around us, their help and our teachers and all those adults in our lives, they can help us do those things, okay? Let's have a word of prayer. God, thank you for loving us unconditionally. Thank you for loving us even when we don't love others or don't even love ourselves. And we, um, we don't know how to, how to react to that. Lord, help us to love ourselves as you love us. And help us then to share that love out in the world to other people. In your name we pray.
cut your hand off, pluck your eye out. But Jesus has come, you see, to bring a new understanding, a new way of understanding God's love for God's people and fulfilling God's righteousness. Number one, we all have neighbors and the neighbors are all around us. They are the people sitting in our pews. They are people who live next to us. They are the people who we interact with every day. Jesus, you see, is reminding those disciples then and you and I today that it's not just about us. It's about the other. It's about wondering and helping the other to keep what is theirs. It's about helping the other, the neighbor around us, everyone who we greet and meet in life. Primarily, these commandments come, uh, the, this text actually, Jesus is in some, in some cases quoting the second tablet of the commandments. And for good confirmation students, many of you remember at least uh, that uh, it is our relationship to God, the first three commandments, and our relationship to one another. It is that relationship to one another that he wants those first disciples to understand and to embrace and to remember each and every day. Now, one of the great uh, writings of literature, I'm convinced, is Luther's small catechism. Many of you know that the small catechism was written for parents to teach their children the basics of the faith. And each of those, actually, the story goes that uh, Luther's son wanted to know Basis Das. What is this? What is this? In pointing to the commandments, the creed, and the prayer, those basics of who we are. Tell others about who we are. And in each of those explanations, Luther lays out what it means to be, um, be a, a neighbor in the world. One of the things I do when I teach the commandments is I talk about, in Luther's explanations, the do's of the commandments, so do not, and the do nots. So, do not murder, but what are we called to do? So the ninth commandment and the tenth commandment are about coveting. Many have suggested that when we covet, we break the other um, eight or nine commandments. So for Luther, in his explanation of those commandments, he says uh, in number nine that we are do not trick our neighbor out of their inheritance, their property, or anything that is theirs. That's what we're called not to do. But... And here's the hard thing about loving neighbor. We are to help keep track, help them keeping what is theirs. Help them keep what is theirs. Luther, in each of the explanations, talks about fear, love, and trust God so that, so that we do not, in the ninth and tenth, trick our neighbor out of our inheritance or property, but instead help them keep what is theirs. Help them understand what is theirs. Watch out for that um, in what is theirs. The commandments, you see, are expressions and of ways that we love our neighbor that we reach out to our neighbor, and it is sometimes, yes, impossible. It is impossible to do with that neighbor who continues to annoy us and frustrate us and make bad choices over and over and over. It is impossible for you and I, but 
with God's love and expression of that love, we seek to go into the world with it and share love with that neighbor. In a world that many times favors rewards and individualism, what Jesus is trying to under, help us understand, those disciples then and you and I today, that we're called to be a community. A community of diversity, yes, but a community who rallies around, who is unified under Christ. It is that Christ that moves us to share love with neighbor and show love of God in the world. I think Jesus says what he says, actually, to shake up those disciples. Because at the end of all of those uh, laws and rules and regulations, the, the disciples are like, their heads are spinning, and they say, how can we do this? And then we hear those words, it is impossible, um, but with God all things are possible. It is that community that we build, that we seek to build as we go into the world with the people that we meet and greet every day. You know, Paul had a lot of problems with the people at Corinth. He, uh, he just continued to hammer them and remind them of their unity in Christ. In fact, many of them were setting up camps. I belong to Paul. I belong to Apollos. And what does Paul say to the Corinthians? I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you except a couple here and there. But to remind them that it is God who empowers them. The vehicle through which God was working, of course, was Paul. Paul tells them, I watered, but God grew that work, that love, that expression of love that goes into the world. It is that expression of love that we share out into the world. Jesus reminds uh, the disciples of that, and he reminds us of that here today. In the midst of this individualism and rewards and favors in our community, we help others and we share love because that's how Christ has called us because he first loved us, we can then love and share that love with others. Let us pray. God, we thank you. Thank you for the words of scripture, the word before us today. Remind us always that we are called into the world to share your love, as hard as that is at times, Lord as impossible as it may seem with you, God, all things are possible. Empower this community. Thank you for the ministry we've been able to do and the ways we've sought to be unified in Christ, um, the ways that we seek to continue to be about mission and ministry focused on the God we know in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen.
for you the needs of all countries and communities who seek to care for one another. Help us to not merely rely upon governments for justice, but to seek and do justice in our own daily lives. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. For those among us who need care, help us be the caregivers. When we name your names before you in prayer, help us also be a real presence to those we know. LaDonna, Al, <coughs> Helen, Ernie, Miles, John, Kenny Lee, Jackie, Charles, and Stephen. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. For whom else and what else shall we pray? For my mom, Lay, for feeding her health. For them. For Judy. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Make all our petitions selfless, like those who taught us to pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share with one another the sign of God's peace. Please be seated as we receive the offering and listen to our choir meeting.
be for us the end and the beginning, our purest pleasure, our victorious crown, our never-ending love. And so we pray and praise. Amen. By the grace of God, we are bold to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. The table has been set before you.
comes forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. So before we uh, dismiss and go into our meeting, um, we wanted to recognize a special lady in our midst. Uh, all of us are special, but you only reach 100 um, once in a lifetime, right? Um, so we want to, yeah. We did sing to you, I imagine, I imagine Helen, there, are, there were lots of celebrations, uh, probably for your birthday. And we, uh, we have a little in because David told us a couple of things. So the council decided that they wanted to give a gift to your favorite charity, the Salvation Army. Uh, so we sent off a check for $100 um, to them in your, in your honor. And then also we wanted, we didn't want you to, um, to be, you know, left alone. So we also found out that your, one of your favorite places to eat, I guess, is Longhorn? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a gift card from the council members um, for another $100. Um, please uh, enjoy that and celebrate. Um, and we're so blessed to have you. It's just a wonderful gift. Thank you for, for sharing your, your life and, and with all of us. So, yeah. But here you go. And the flowers are here, too.